The world is a global village. And that's because information travels beyond boundaries. And on this morning on ITV, we guarantee unbiased analysis on topical issues. That will educate you. Entertain you. So, join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. Every Sunday to Thursday, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. on your ultimate news and current affairs program on television this morning on ITV TMR. Join us. Okay, thanks again and again for joining us on your ultimate news and current affairs program on television this morning on ITV. Beautiful Monday. Of course, uh, the last time we'll be together before it's Christmas. So once again, Merry Christmas. Today on the show, our focus is on the federal government's new visa policy. They call it Visa on Arrival. President Muhammadu Buhari made that announcement or made that pronouncement in faraway Cairo, the capital of Egypt, during the Aswan Peace and Security meeting there. And that has opened the floodgates of reactions and counter-reactions, as well as criticisms. Some have given different interpretations to this. But today on the program, we'll look at the position of the law, and then we'll also look at the reactions trailing this single policy. On the part of the National Assembly, you've asked the federal government to interface with them so that the laws will be amended to give room for this new visa policy that has been initiated by the federal government of Nigeria. What is the implication of this new visa policy, particularly for the rest of Africa and, of course, for Nigeria and for Nigerians? I want to say a big thanks to Comrade Christian Usagali. Comrade Christian Usagali is a social commentator. He's also a social worker. Comrade, many thanks for joining us on the program. Good morning. It's my pleasure. We also have with us Barrister St. Michael's Egwagi. Barrister St. Michael's Egwagi is a civil society activist, a public affairs commentator. Many thanks for joining us, Barrister St. Michael's. Thank you so much. Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Mm. Okay, let me start with you. Uh, being the lawyer here, uh, give us your perspectives on the position of the law on this new development as it relates to the visa policy, uh, new visa policy initiated by the federal government. Uh, well, um... I would say uh, I'm a, a bit taken aback uh, by the policy um, against the backdrop of uh, the extant uh, policy that was Hitato initiated by the federal government, uh, talking about uh, the ban on the uh, importation of uh, uh, rice and similar produce from uh, neighboring countries and uh, from all other you know, countries into Nigeria. Uh, how that policy you know, can run pari pasu uh, with the visa on arrival policy uh, is, is yet to be seen. Uh, for me, uh, this amount to you know, uh, operational inverted syllogism, uh, more or less like uh, putting logic you know, upside down. Uh, I haven't said that. I think uh, the declaration, you know, in, in Cairo, the Cairo declaration, you know, so to speak, uh, was made uh, within the euphoria of the endorsement of the African uh, Free Trade Agreement, uh, which, if uh, become uh, operational, uh, we allow for uh, free movement of uh, goods, services, as well as uh, you know, individuals uh, within the African continent. Uh, it will also allow. Yeah, that's why right. this is Nigeria. <laughs>
apologies again for that break occasioned by passage. We thank you for your understanding. We continue with the show, TMI. And of course, we're looking at the new visa policy initiated by the federal government. And of course, our first panelist on the show, Barrister St. Michael Segwagi, was giving us some perspectives on it, particularly on the position of the law. Uh, like I said before, yeah. I said if uh, the African uh, uh, free trade agreements you know, become operational, yeah. it will allow for uh, free movement of goods and services uh, within the African continent. It will also allow for you know, uh, the utilization and the use of uh, you know, common currency uh, uh, like you have in, uh, in Europe. Uh, it is uh, an adoption of uh, the euro concept, uh, which will be implemented in Africa, mutatis mutandis, okay. you know, subject to little modifications and uh, adaptations. You know, but however, before you know, that uh, international instrument uh, become functional and operational, you know, certain things you know, must be put in place. Uh, perhaps uh, the president, you know, did he consider the social, uh, uh, cultural, and constitutional implications uh, before he made, you know, these uh, you know, declarations? Okay. Uh, maybe um, he, he did this out of, uh, you know, passion, or perhaps it's uh, out of sheer ignorance. Um, before, you know, the instrument become operational, the first thing you do is to, first of all, amend the extant immigration law, the Immigration Act, you know, to accommodate uh, this uh, initiative. Uh, again, is that um, you must, you know, domesticate the law. In other words, it has to come, you know, via a bill, you know, to the National House of Assembly. It, it will go through the whole hog of a uh, legislative procedure uh, where it is uh, accepted by two thirds majority, it becomes uh, an act, it becomes uh, a law. Uh, all of these are yet to take place. Yeah. Again, is that uh, we are already overwhelmed you know, by security challenges uh, due to the exodus, or the influx of uh, all manners of individuals you know, coming from across neighboring countries. You know, to foment trouble in Nigeria due to our porous borders. Yeah. You know, if you, you know, further initiate a policy like this, you know, which uh, throw our border open, you know, to every dictum of Harry, you know, I think it will, you know, compound our, you know, security woes, which we are already battling with. Okay, just, just hold it right there, Barrister St. Michael's Gwagia. Let, let me come to you, uh, Kristen. Uh, do you think that Mr. President made this pronouncement on the spur of the moment, or it was it, 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 uh, it, it was well thought through before this pronouncement was made? I guess the background that uh, Nigeria just joined this whole, um, um, you know, yes, African Free Trade Agreement, African uh, Movement, Free Movement stuff in July. I think alongside with Benin Republic, yeah. Well, I don't think the president was just announce it or take decision without uh, a lot of factors have not been put into place. I think the president is probably, for me, reading his, I just feel like he read his mind, not happy that uh, other African countries are setting the pace for Nigeria. Because if you look at Rwanda, Syria alone, Kenya, um, Gamb I think Gambia, some other African countries have started this policy. Rwanda started it as far back as I think 2016 or so. And with that policy, the economy of Rwanda is growing. And before Nigeria make this pronouncement, a lot of things have already been put in place. If you remember some year ago, some time ago, the, the um, Babadede, the, um, the Controller General, General of, of Immigration, immigration. Okay. said, insisted on a policy of e passports. That means every citizen coming must be captured. Whether you are here, no matter when they see your passport, they will know where you are at the point of your entry and any many, the number of times you have gone out. 
the e passport is a mechanism to complement this policy. Now, I am not a lawyer, so I don't want to look at the legal implication, okay. but I want to look at the social aspects as it will benefit the citizenry. I, I think those actually complaining are missing the point. Because when you, just like, for example, I have money, I'm in Gambia, and I feel cocoa business is good in Nigeria. I, did, I, I, I don't really need to go to a Nigeria embassy to begin to ask questions. All I need to do is to hold my portfolio, which is my business portfolio, enter Nigeria. At the point of entry, I am given visa. After due interrogation, mm -hmm. after procedure that is required before entry is followed, when they not describe genuinely that I'm genuinely interested in investing in the country, I will be given visa. So, and at times, you know the way most uh, Africans believe, behave. Most times, there have been reports that even if a citizen of Nigeria go to any embassy outside the country to even get your visa renewed, it's a problem. So those things have, have so over the years, caused us a lot of headache. I think, and that is not only peculiar to Nigeria. I think that is why Africa now, in as much as they are thinking of integration, they are equally thinking of removing certain bottlenecks that will reduce E-commerce. E-commerce is the key now, globally. Okay. And unless Nigeria are key in, you describe that a lot of things will never take um, their proper perspective. I, I know when you say on arrival, you, you increase the number of uh, citizens that want to come to your country. And by the time you do that, you are increasing the aspect of uh, tourism. So those complaints should have now be preparing for that opportunity like the state government, the local government, because when you go around the country, there are many tourism sites that have been abandoned. So, in, like I said, in Rwanda, people go to Rwanda just to go and see how beautiful Rwanda is. You know, at a point, Rwanda, Rwanda was buried, mm. and they thought Rwanda would never rise again. And now, like the president said, or Kagama said, Rwanda has risen from the grave, and they will not go back. So people just want to go there and see. And by the time you come, you stay in a hotel, you buy a taxi, you are, you, you are putting money in the economy of that okay. country. Okay. So it's a policy. Mm -hmm. A policy of government needs to be followed by law. So it does not necessarily mean you need to make law before you make policy. Okay. You understand? Okay. Let, let, let me bring uh, Mr. Gwagi in here. I think uh, yes, yes. the citing of uh, Rwanda mm. to make a, a case here amount to philosophical malapropism. It is misplaced. It is misapplied. Uh, Rwanda is not Nigeria. You know, Rwanda has its own peculiar, you know, environment. Why well, Nigeria? It is a part of. You know, as its own. I know it, 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 it is part yeah. of the African and continent. It's part of the African free trade. But the, the, the Rwanda is not experiencing, you know, the kind of security challenges Nigeria is experiencing at the moment. You see, what you know dictates the actions and inactions of state actors and non-state actors at the international fora is interest. You must know how to service your interest and service it effectively and efficiently. Nigeria at the moment has a peculiar security challenges, you know, occasioned by the influx of all manners of, you know, elements, you know, crossing, having free access to our country due to our porous borders. And these people come here <laughs> to foment trouble. So what Nigeria needs to be doing at the moment is to, you know, strengthen our immigration laws that will help, you know, to trim down and perhaps, you know, begin, you know, to sift out, you know, the people, you know, coming to Nigeria so that we'll be able to, you know, get good persons who have genuine purpose and genuine objective who have something to come and do here and add value you know to our economic and political environment not throwing the border open at the moment sorry duke i told you earlier that apart from the security challenges we already have a policy running border closure border closure at one breath we are closing the border at another breath you are announcing 
you know, uh, uh, visa and arrival policy. I said this amount to, you know, uh, uh, inverted, you know, slogism, putting logic on his head. I don't know how, you know, they intend to uh, operate this, uh, okay. you know, to let policies. Me, okay, let me, let me, you let know, me bring, let it's, me, it's stuck yes, as my yes, logical let, argument. Let me bring, let me bring uh, Christian in here. Uh, uh, let's, let's get your thoughts on some of the issues that I raised. I mean, we have a policy of the federal government on border closure, operational now. And now we are initiating another policy which has to do with visa on arrival. Uh, making Nigeria acceptable to any citizen of Africa that has a valid visa of his country. What do you make of this? Isn't this, uh, uh, this um, counterproductive? I, I think, you see, before and after independence, the problem of Nigeria is that we speak too much English. And this English has not helped us at all. Logic, I met somebody a few days ago from Benin Republic in Ogun State. So when you say border has been closed, you need to draw the line. Does it mean no human being passed the border across? What is, when they say border has been closed, is to make sure that whoever comes in, comes in genuinely. If you are bringing goods, the goods are genuine. This, it does not mean border has been closed, that nobody passed, nobody comes in. Like you said, um, um, rice importation the, has the been... border closure, isn't it um, <laughs> anti the African free trade zone yes, policy, isn't it? It is. <laughs> yes. But the border closure is a blessing to this country. Mm -hmm. If you observe, we're talking of crime and criminality. Yes. Let us be honest. For the past three months, there's a, a, a reduction. Because if you see the report of custom the other day, the coach of arms that have been discovered in that border, the other day, the, the custom banned all filling stations close to Nigerian borders. Because they were using it to siphon fuel from this country. Okay. So a lot of illegality has been going on. Unless is this is a, 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 a policy uh, um, statement that you, you move from one point to the other. Because of this um, big brother that we have played in Africa. That was why every uh, garbage in and garbage out has been our portion all these years. So when this government, I say no. Because before then, the federal government was using what we call subtle diplomacy. Meeting these neighboring uh, leaders, look, even the ECOWAS free movement issue does not mean you should, the goods that you don't need in your country should pass through your country to Nigeria. No. Yeah. If I'm importing something from China and I'm passing through Benin Republic, the law says that immediately I land in Benin Republic, the custom office are there because the destination is Nigeria. Yeah. The custom there escorts me and my goods to Nigeria border and hand over me and my goods to the Nigeria custom so that those goods will be taxed. Yeah. But what they were doing before now was to collect tax on those goods in the Republic, in Republic yes. and show those um, businessmen illegal routes that they will enter Nigeria. So those things have not been helping this country. Okay. So we must begin to understand what government wants. It's not every policy of government, whether I like this government or not, that will begin to um, condemn. kind of con condemn. Okay. There are things that we must do as a people. You cannot say because I, I have been like this, that we must always remain like this. For me, be, right now, Ghana, I just listened to the president of Ghana saying that the time has come for Ghanaians to be eating local rice. All other African countries, now those neighboring African countries, are beginning to understand that Nigeria has been taken for granted for too long. And they are not beginning to, negotiation is going on. Yeah. So that, what Nigeria is insisting, not that you don't come, what they are insisting is if you are coming, follow the law. <laughs> and the law must be followed. That is why the government okay. is saying, okay. we will not tell even the day that these borders will be open. Mr. Okay. Sonny, okay. okay. so, yes. so, yes. I'm coming yes. to yes. the conflict yes. in the new policy. There yes. is no conflict at all. Okay. Because it's a policy, you don't just say policy and you start implementing today. But before that January, announcement, January is yes, the before that for the announcement, if yes. you listen to the immigration director, yes. he said the, the mechanism of e passport have been perfected already. Mm -hmm. You see, when they say visa, look at the definition of visa. It's not just every day can have will come into Nigeria. Before you, you come, you must. Well, every, every Tom Dick and Harry can come into Nigeria. But before that. When you have, the, when you have a, a valid visa of your own country. I read that. I yes, read that. when yes. you have a valid visa of your of own your country. country yes. Then when you come to Nigeria, yes. on arrival. You, the visa you, will be issued to you. After due process. When, you have, been when you have a, a valid passport of your country. Of your country. You come to Nigeria, you'll be issued a visa. visa on arrival. Before you are issued a visa, there are <laughs> procedures 
visa is not something you buy from the market, sir. Absolutely. So there are procedures that you must follow. Okay, let me let me. So that you. there is a room. Just hold it, just hold it right there, Christian. Yes. It, it, it appears uh, uh, Segali has taken over the job of Femi Adishino. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure. Adishino no, 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 I mean, he has the right to. He has the right <laughs> to his opinion. He has the right to because his opinion. Yeah. What, what he is doing now is struggling to wear this policy pampas. Mm. Are you getting it now? You know because uh, uh, this is a policy. You know that uh, you know. I don't know how you are going to look at it. You know, it's not going to favor Nigerians. And uh, uh, our representatives have spoken our mind already. Perhaps it's not aware that the policy was rejected. Well, was it yesterday or day yesterday? You know, by two-third majority of members of the House of Senate. Primarily because of the reasons I've just highlighted here. One, you know, the policy was nowhere thought out. Two, the extant immigration laws have not been amended. So you cannot enforce it in Nigeria. Three, you know, the free African free trade agreement have not been domesticated. Four, we have a teaching security problem, which if, you know, allowed to operate here, we compound our problem. We may all have to leave Nigeria and live in Jupiter or Mars. Are you getting So it is the totality of all of these issues. The people representing of take into consideration. They rejected it. So I don't know what uh, Segale is, is saying here. Are you getting it now? Before a government can initiate a policy of this magnitude, the government, you know, must, you know, take into consideration the collective interest of the people. Perhaps there will be a need for, you know, a forum, a conference, where you invite people with contents, not, you know, all dictoma, dictoma hari. Are you getting it now? At that table, all shade of opinion will be adequately represented. What is the essence? The essence is to cross pollinate ideas. No man is a monopoly of knowledge. Absolutely. And no man is a repertoire of wisdom. Are you getting it now? We all have something you know, to contribute, you know, to nation building. The question I want to ask here. Who did the president consult? Who did the president discuss this issue with before he went to Cairo to make this declaration? This president, you know, has been known, you know, to be incommunicado in Nigeria, but is is so expressive outside the country. He keeps news in Nigeria. He talks less. He sometimes doesn't even talk at all. Most of the policies of this administration are cooked, initiated, and declared outside the shores of this country. Some of us were taken aback because we don't know when the policy was initiated. We don't know who was consulted. In fact, I'm very sure that Raouf Aregbe Shola was even taken aback. He was not even, he was not even taken uh, there. You, you can't substantiate into, that. Into consideration. Well, was not part of this, uh, you cannot substantiate that here. Well, Raouf Aregbe Shola uh, yes. was you, invited did you, did you by, 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 by Senate. Did you call him? Did you call him? He couldn't attend did you because he cannot defend the policy. No, no, that's that's why that, he couldn't go. That's probably not why. He had other things go. on his plate. You have no, no. Let yes. us let us okay. now let, 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 let me, us let, be, I know, let no, us um, who we Christian, are. Nigeria is becoming a banana republic. Let me let me bring you in here, uh, Christian. Let me bring you in here. The uh, federal government's new visa policy on arrival, from all indication, would take effect from first of January, and we know that that's just a couple of days away. I recall that the Senate President made some comments on it. Uh, I think one of the principal officers in the Senate saying that, well, it's a commendable initiative by Mr. President. All that he needs to do is to engage the Senate or the National Assembly to review the existing laws to accommodate this new policy. Uh, what do you make of these as a major uh, barrier towards the implementation of this new 
visa policy. And I want to tell you, first of all, this government will not even have any barrier implementing the policy. Because before now, it's just that we are not, there is no comprehensive follow-up. When the e-passport was launched, go yeah. and look at the nitty-gritty. These are all encompassed already in it. Okay. The modality of implementing it has been done. We're talking of pre President consulting. There are a lot of things that President, maybe I don't know how many times you have not cut his door and asked him <laughs> how many people you have discussed with before you take this decision. So there is a thing we cannot just be concluding the way, before you can be sure what you are saying, you must have conducted research to conclude. If you look at the breakdown of the uh, Mohammed Damb Dambadi of this policy, you get the clearer picture of that the fact it's not something that they were, that the presidents just wake up and decide. It has always been there. You see, the, the, the emphasis we must begin to focus on as a people. First, the National Assembly can just, it's a resolution. Does, it's not binding. Now, how many, how, listen, we have seen many resolutions in the National Assembly that they, 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 they will concur. How many times did National Assembly pass a resolution that Nigeria government must sign that free trade, African free trade agreement. You told, it, it, it was only Nigeria and I think Benin that was last to sign that agreement. Even when Benin was already willing to go, they were still waiting for Nigeria. Until eventually, like uh, the, president, the president said then, I'm careful not to sign because of so many factors. Because really, we are, you cannot benefit from it because we are a consuming nation, not a producing nation. The only way such an agreement will be of benefit to you is when you are a producing nation. So the government has said, no, at the point where they now um, signed the policy, are you telling me now that the, 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 the National Assembly will come and change the, 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 the law? It's, the, the, the world is, a, is far becoming a global village. Yes. Syria alone. Well, are you saying without domestication of the uh, free trade agreement in Nigeria, it will just become operational? Is that what you're saying? No. <laughs> the, free trade, uh, the free trade agreement must be domesticated. That's the point. We are saying this yes. as Nigeria is a signatory mm. to international laws and agreements. Yes. That law will, not, will come to Nigeria and will not be thrown out. Yes. Certainly, the It will come to Nigeria, but it can't function in Nigeria until it is domesticated. That's the point he has established. The point is this. That yes. that Nigeria have signed. Yes. Before when Nigeria have not signed, we will not be talking of domestication. Mm -hmm. Now that Nigeria have signed, so it's now the duty of government to domesticate it, yes. which will not even take uh, Eldorado okay. to do. Okay. This thing up. So you are optimistic that but, between but, but, now, but point is, by January, this thing will take effect. Why is the giant of Africa yes. afraid of change? Mm. See, they alone. Even Rwanda, he mentioned, he never, maybe he's not aware of what Rwanda passed through about 16 years ago. Mm. Rwanda was a, 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 a catchment of evil, horror. But we are saying Nigeria is not one. Look at Syria alone. They have just finished civil war for how many dozen of years. They are implementing visa on arrival policy. The so-called giant of Africa does not have the capacity. Some, uh, Nigeria is telling me the so-called giant of Africa does not have the capacity to implement visa on arrival policy. Mm. So let me tell you, a country that wants to grow, that want to move to the next level, must open its doors for foreigners. Okay, now, that's good, good point. Good point that you have raised. I, I will not say you that. You don't open your doors. No, no, hold on. Uh, by Sa by Sa Sa Michael, by Sa Michael, I just want to ask this question. Mm. Are we saying that um, the progress and development of a country is predicated on operating a visa on arrival policy? We know there are countries in the world who are doing well we are very well, they are successful. This Without this policy, the United States of America, UK. Russia, UK, and several of them. I, I don't know what you make of this. The issue is, yeah. you mentioned America. Yes. Have you calculated how many free visa? Not, even no, Nigeria. No, we're not talking about free visa no, now. So I'm asking a question. I'm talking about visa on, on arrival. arrival. Yes. See, visa on arrival is a policy. Yes. Every government is saddled with the peculiarity of issues confronting it. Mm. Why is these countries giving free visa to people? They need strangers yes. to help them develop their country. Mm -hmm. So if government, instead of say free visa, visa on arrival has no relationship with free visa. You understand? And even the free visa that those so-called uh, developed uh, countries have, are, are making available for, especially for Africans, 
they, they don't just give you free. There are procedure. The, the, language, the, the language in quotes is free. But it's not something you just collect free. There are procedures you must pass through before you get that free visa. So in, likewise, there are procedures you must pass through before visa on arrival is issued to you. Okay, all right. It's not a free ticket to, okay, okay. to come and... But okay. when we are talking of security, yes. when we are talking of security, sir, it depends on the angle you are looking at it from. And I believe most of us, there are no nation that is completely free from if security. Most of us left our home to this venue this morning. If there was no security, we would not have been able to do that. Government exists to make sure that if the security ratio, insecurity ratio is 50% today, is the responsibility of government to reduce it. You understand? So, and security is a collective business. Every society that fights insecurity, it becomes a collective responsibility of everybody. Not to say somebody, stranger, enter your house and you know the things he's doing. All right. And you just align to call right. the government. Now, 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 so there let are, us not use this security there to not do things that will favor us. There are reactions us. trailing this new visa policy on arrival by the federal government. Uh, one, of these, one of it is that uh, before now, uh, people have complained about the porous nature of our borders. And, of course, from the last count, over 1,200 unmanned borders, I mean, routes in our borders that people can... Uh, okay, so it's, over, it's, it's more than that, right? Okay, now, so uh, that's just been modest in my uh, uh, presentation, in my analysis. But the point here is, if we have this number of porous borders that are unmanned, which have been taken advantage, on due advantage of, to undermine the security of this country. So what's going to happen? Uh, is it that right now, in putting to practice this new visa policy on arrival, these unmanned borders have not been taken care of? Take, for example, in the U.S., where President Donald Trump is building a wall to wait off people coming in from, from Mexico. Mexico and the rest of them. Do we have that in place? Or suddenly we engage more personnel for immigration, for the police, and for the, uh, from the customs to man these illegal routes. That's one question begging for answer. Now, when we put this policy in place, what becomes of the country? There have been fears expressed. For example, people have talked about, people, some, some analysts have said, well, Mr. President is in, in a subtle way encouraging the influx of headers from other parts of the country into Nigeria. I read a piece put together by, by former Minister of Aviation, uh, Femi Fani Kayode, and I think uh, Mr. Mike Ozekome has also commented in that direction. But let, let, me, let me get your thoughts along this line. That Mr. President, this is a subtle way of uh, uh, encouraging headsmen into the country. In fact, I actually saw a video online where uh, lots of people were moving and they carrying their goods and someone said, oh, these are the first set of Fulani headsmen that are taking advantage of the new visa policy on arrival by the federal government. I say, oh my God, people just won't stop at trying to uh, twist issues online. Let, let's get your thoughts, Ambassador and Michaels. I want to repeat once more that Rwanda is not faced with Fulani headsmen challenges. Rwanda is not faced with the threat of Boko Haram. The threat of Fulani Hesmen and Boko Haram are real in Nigeria today. Secondly, I want to also make the point that you don't need to initiate visa on arrival policy in order to experience economic prosperity. The Asian Tigers have been able to demystify the myths that have been sold in centuries and ages by the Western concentric alliances that capitalism and democracy necessarily 
give birth to economic prosperity. China and all other Asia tigers do not operate capitalism. They do not operate uh, this uh, visa on arrival policy. In fact, they are strict with their immigration laws and policies. And yet, these countries are judged as the fastest growing economies in the world due to you know what we call uh, you know benevolent autocratism or despotism that is operational in those countries now mr sonny the point i'm trying to establish here is that you don't need a visa on arrival policy to strengthen your economy. What you need is a blueprint that captures, you know, the peculiar need of your environment, taking advantage of your economic, you know, your your, your strengths because every country has its own. You know, economic strengths. Okay. You take advantage of your economic strengths and come up with policies, you know, that will add value. Okay, let me, let me push you right there. This government, this administration, yeah. has not been able to do that. Okay, let, let me push you there. Let me push you there. Uh, we'll be right back after this short break to continue our conversations on federal government's new visa policy on arrival. With all the reactions trailing it, we've got Austin Agbe, is a civil society uh, personality uh, that will be joining us shortly in a moment. Stay with us. EMI, every opinion counts. Okay, thank you again for staying with us. Uh, I think for a moment you almost caught me right there. It's a live studio. Anything can happen. But we thank you for staying with us on TMI Monday. We just step up a little bit on our conversations on the federal government's new visa policy on arrival. We've got a friend from the Center for Democracy and Development, Abuja, right there, the federal capital of Nigeria, Comrade Austin Agbe. Many thanks for joining us, Comrade. How are you doing? It's a great honor to be here today. Merry Christmas. And same to you. Okay, so how is Abuja? Wow, I, I think Abuja is just like every other state. Even though it's a state of government, yeah. but it's important that um, all the money is there. Yeah. Okay. We'll, 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 we'll talk about. We'll talk about that. 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 we will uh, government agencies and what have you. What's the mood like on this issue? So it's important to start the conversation um, in a way that people understand what the policy is about. Okay. But the, it, the federal government of Nigeria is not communicating properly about the visa policy. Uh, that's why the National Assembly had to summon uh, the, the Minister of uh, Interior, yeah. uh, uh, the Governor of Washington State, to come explain. It means that the models, the operationality of the visa policy is not known to even the National Assembly, our representative. So when the National Assembly uh, are not informed of the models operandi, then it, it becomes a challenge for the ordinary Nigerians to also know. So when people begin to, to generate views about the visa policy, you won't blame them because that's their own information that they do have. So people are beginning to generate their own information. Uh, in my opinion, um, uh, as one was that will be privileged to, to travel a bit around, around the world, visa policy has a lot of value to add to the Nigerian economy. However, it depends on the module, the, the, the modality. Um, I was just sharing a few minutes ago, I, I don't want to ever think of myself going to South Africa because I was going to attend an African Union meeting in South Africa and it took me about a month to get my visa. I just applied for four days to, 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 to South Africa. 
and the meeting was in two weeks and I didn't get my visa after about three weeks the, meeting, the meeting ended and they gave me one more visa and I was like why are you giving me my visa it's too late come on pull it out I don't need it because you should have looked at the consistency of my, of my passport that I've, I'm, I'm not I'm not going to go okay. to South Africa to stay it's a guy that is the, the, the least of the state I would like to stay. To stay yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, you go to Tanzania. I drop on some, um, Tanzania and I go in at $50. I just walk straight. Or in Rwanda or elsewhere in Ghana. Okay, of course, Ghana is a um, neighboring country. Is, is, yeah. is country. Yeah. You just walk in. Yeah. And I've been elsewhere, even, even Kenya, and you just walk in. But there are countries maybe in the other hemisphere like the United States or uh, Canada and elsewhere. You need those preparation because of the quest of terrorism. Of yeah. course, I know that that you made a come a bit. So when you come into Nigeria, you drop at the, at, at the border point. You are screened. You will apply for your visa. You will then pay the $50. They, 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 they try to find out, are you coming for the right reason? Do you have an address you're going to stay? Because all of those are supposed to be yes. noted in your application. Okay. That I'm going to live in this uh, address. This is my invitation letter. So those people, if I, when I was going to Canada from the US, I was going to Canada, the person was inviting me, they had to call him to be sure that he was expecting me. Yeah. That's at the border in Toronto. Yeah. So sometimes it's allowed so when, you, when you try to, um, in, in terms of an economic advantage. However, it is very important when we, the, the, our president, uh, I, I don't know, it, it may be his own strategy, every national policy is announced outside of the country. That is not a good one for the Nigerian state. You, you go out to make statements and you're informing Nigerians about the policy of Nigeria without first looking at those policies internally. We, uh, of course, you need to discuss. If it was discussed at the Federal Executive Council, it needs to be related to us as the Nigerian people. But that usually don't happen. And that's where I think that's the challenge. And that's why you see a lot of fake news now peddling around because at CDD we do uh, counter fake news. And we see that the reason for fake news majorly is when there is half truth. So when people don't know the real truth, the possibility is that they are going to begin to think of the truth, and in a bit to think of the truth, they peddle fake news. And I think that the Nigerian government has the honor to respect Nigerian people, to make very strong political statement, because this policy is a political statement, and it's a very strong one for Nigerian people, especially now I hear people talk about um, invasion of, uh, the, of Boko Haram, the Swab group, the, the, the S men, and all of that. And but also think about there are also other groups who are coming in yeah. who may not be Islamic, who may be Christianic. Okay. So, so there are people who are coming from the U.S. who will come, to, who will drop at the border and going for, who, who will go in into the country on arrival. So we need visa to arrive, but it is important to spell out what module, what process, what modality. What oppression so people can begin to relate with it at that level. The way it is now, it is more like in a secret. Okay. It's so it uh, brings to question the communication strategy of the federal government to help Nigerians buy into the new visa policy on arrival. What do you make of that, uh, Christian? Well, I want to thank God for my brother who, you see, I believe in practical. He has uh, kind of just opposed our discussion with practical experience, which makes life easier. Okay. Because it's not just to sit and begin to shout everybody in a ring road that this and that, and you have not been to a ring road one day. So the, now the point I need my, my brother to equally investigate based on his kind of profession is look at the, the, the law guiding this e-visa policy of the federal government. Those procedure of entry point are uh, already captured in the e-visa mechanism. So you discover that I think if they have uh, made this policy before the policy of e-visa, we would have said, no, it's wrong. So you, there is a complementary point where this e-visa meets. Christian, you're talking that this e-visa policy has been the point of uh, pontification in the last couple of minutes. But I, I'm looking at the issue of appropriate communication strategy in order to help Nigerians buy into this policy. What do you make of it? Are if we communicating... You, appropriately no yes completely no if you observe since this government came there have been issue of communication okay. gap okay. between the people and the government that one is, is you know when you are so when you stay in darkness too long you begin to see gradually <laughs> so we, we i think nigerians have begun to move up beyond that communication because for me the president have done the normal thing if it's weak to remove those who are not represent who are not picked um, projecting very well. I was even the other day to not be surprised to discuss this issue of communication. Even the wife of the president have even quality and was angered by the way 
the president is represented by his uh, so-called um, um, information managers. managers. They are not managing it well. But unfortunately, and good for us, this is our country. So if we have been um, caged like this, does not mean that uh, uh, all of us will just commit suicide. There is a, the, 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 the government has failed completely on communicating. Even the National Assembly you mentioned, at times they play to the gallery. Things over time, is it maybe because of the way we are as a people. And that is why you begin to see all these things. But my point is, in the face of this improper communication, which is triggering fake news, then too, some of us, too, like he say, are beginning to even look at in between the line. Before, I, before we draw a line, we cannot, most of us don't actually go to sleep because we are config, uh, completely dedicated to fake news. We equally want to find out how, what is the truth in this fake news? What is the line of truth in it? Then you try to do verification. And all this you can equally do online easily. Okay. That government it ought to do that on our behalf. Make this information public. Yeah. You know, in those days there was massa. Mm -hmm. Before government even go to public, massa is everywhere. Yeah. So you know, those things are no longer available. Okay, let me, let so me. we must begin to okay. focus. When we, like Ohaneze was saying, I concerning this issue. Yeah. Uh, because of Ruga, that is why this government is bringing it. Yes. Now, you don't just conclude like that. So a lot of things, yeah, we but, do. But you, can you blame them for concluding that way? I am not blaming them. Can you blame them, them for concluding if that way? ITV mm -hmm. has concluded like that, mm -hmm. you will not bring this panel. Mm -hmm. For public, this is what are we doing here? Public knowledge. Yes. That is the best thing an organization needs to do. Yes. Because probably you must, this, the ITV as a station must have had different version of information. So you now bring people. Let the public know. Okay. With okay. Let, say yeah. globally yeah. known. Yes. They should have equally made that investigation mm. before they draw so the line. So what makes you think that they've not made that investigation? Then that, before they, 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 they don't draw the line. Let, so, me, let me push you. Uh, let me come to um, Austin. I'll be back with you shortly. Um, because we don't have so much time. What's your take on the feasibility of this policy uh, against the background of the limitation of time is to take effect in January? The National Assembly is yet to domesticate all of this in terms of appropriate, appropriate legislation to domesticate it. And the federal government has said, well, by 1st of January, this new visa policy on arrival will take effect. And you said, it looks like all of this is in secrecy. So what do you make of the feasibility? So yeah. just to quickly add that the, federal, uh, the National Assembly, this is not a law. It's not a law. It's only the, the, the well, National Assembly has some peculiarity of intervention. Yes. So the, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria did not spell out, or there is no act of parliament specifying the modules of, of application of visas. So I, I do know that the, the NIS, the National Immigra uh, Immigration Service. Nigerian Immigration Service, yes. is responsible for visa application, uh, the, visa uh, uh, approval, and all the of foreign that. Ministry. But it, it's important to state, without equivocation, that in as much as there is a secret module in terms of the application or the, in terms of the statement being made, don't forget, President Bodhi had made a lot of statement outside of Nigeria when the the, 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 the statement about. President Buhari was double, uh, a cloning of Mr. President. For the first time, he responded outside the country. So President Buhari is known to respond to national issues outside the country. So when he's traveling, you expect a national conversation. So it's important. We're talking about e-visa. The U.S. run e-visa. You apply for your visa online. Ah, yeah, when, you are, when you're going to the U.S., you go online and you tap, and they send you an, uh, 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 an appointment time. You go for the appointment, and you go in. And if you have been to the U.S. before and you need to renew, you don't have to, have, you don't have to show up for interview. You, go, you just send in your passport. You go to uh, uh, Dropbox and pick it up. Same way in, in Canada and as, as well. So visa, visa at arrival, I think, is wise because it's make a country to be more competitive, but it needs to be local and it needs to be discussed at home. It need to, the Nigerians need to know the, the advantage of it. Otherwise, we are not going to get anywhere. If the National Assembly says no and the president, the executive says yes, the pres executive is likely to go ahead with their policy because it's their policy. Okay. It's not a law. Okay. He doesn't need, uh, he has not sent, a, he hasn't sent a bill to the National Assembly to request for approval. It hasn't done that. It's not a, it's not a budget. It's not a bill. It's just a policy. policy. However, the policy, uh, in terms of public outcry, it may have its own limitation. Like now, 
what ITV is doing is to add to the public debate. Yeah. So people can be able to think about, ah, no, it has advantage, it doesn't have advantage. Or like the social media bill that is currently before the National Assembly, or the hate speech bill. So there's a lot of ubalaho, there's a lot of conversation around those bills, and people are being able to say, no, we don't need it because it is this, it is that, or this. Yeah. So that level of conversation increases what the government needs to do. Don't forget policy is what the government decides to do and not to do. So the government decides to do visa driver and may change, okay, we don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. So a policy does not, it doesn't have a force of law. It can be squashed at any point in time. The president can come out tomorrow and say, well, because of due to public outcry, we don't want to go ahead with it. We thank you very much. And uh, uh, we will think about re-strategizing. Maybe what will happen, like the visa driver, want, uh, just to quickly make this point. During 2015 election, some of our colleagues coming from South Africa for, to observe the election, um, got to Nigeria, that time there was no visa to arrival. So he got to Nigeria and, and they asked him, where's, where's your application? Because he ought to have applied before coming so yeah. they can be, it can be issued be as a rival. Yeah. That's, the, that's the purpose of the visa. visa. So when they come into the country, they see the application, then they stamp it and it goes in. They give me three months, two months, or whatever it is. But this guy refused to. Maybe just thought that Nigeria was a dumpy ground and he got there, it was repatriated. Yeah. And I was so excited. I was like, ah, oh, Nigeria. Nigeria is growing. We are growing. We are growing. That is what. Somebody, it's not the banana republic. Yeah, all, all, all. All. So I think we need to go with the idea of when you are coming, you apply. So when you apply, you then print out the application. So when you come in, they look at what you have. They look at the number of dollars you are bringing in. They look at what operation you are coming to do. They look at where you are going to stay. stay. You are going to leave. Very it's important. important. Very they look important. at the letter of application. Those who, are, who have invited you, are they cogent enough? They, if they are, are not, they credible? You yeah. interrogate yeah. those, those yeah. documents. All right. And so, you are reject or accept them. Sir, well, let, let me take a final word from you on the, um, I mean, just, just uh, uh, piecing all of these together that we've talked about. What are your final thoughts on the workability of this? He just said it's not an act of parliament. It wasn't a bill sent by the executive to the legislature. What are your thoughts on the workability of this? I strongly disagree with the uh, on this issue. Uh, because the National Assembly you know, uh, consists of representatives of the people. Ideally. And the executive exists. Uh, to service the interest of the people. Uh, Section 14 of, the, uh, of uh, the Constitution provides that uh, the primary essence of government and governance is uh, the security and the welfare of the people. To that extent, this is you know, the benchmark or the primary indicator of assessing the performance of any government in this country. So where policies are initiated by the executive that are anti, you know, the national interest of this country, the National Assembly have the constitutional responsibility to intervene just like they have done at the moment. Uh, I have done well to highlight the advantages of uh, these uh, new policies. Uh, but the point I want to make here at the very just and Babana Babana <laughs> is that in spite of all the advantages, in spite of the juicy nature you know, of this policy, which he has pontificated thus far, I still believe that the timing is not right. We are faced with, you know, with the, the, Boko, the threat of Boko Haram and the threat of Fulani Hesme. You don't compel a man to throw open his door where the threat of armed uh, arm robbery is still very much real in his environment. You know, where armed robbers are locking behind you know, the doors. That's one. You know, secondly, uh, where I like to also agree with him, what are the modus operandi of the functionality of this policy? It is shrouded in utmost secrecy, locked up in impenetrable silence. Three, why do the presidents, why is he always in the habit of announcing fundamental policies outside the shores of this country? Is he a foreign president? 
Or is the president of Nigeria? Is the president of Nigeria? You know that. You, you, you know, know that. Personally, I I I like the, the policy. It may be good, but the timing is wrong. Is wrong. All right, uh, Christian. Last word from you. There is no time that will always be right for anything good to come. The fact is that for me, it has even come too late. Because this small Rwanda from deadly civil work we just implemented 2016 and they are, it's working for them. The timing can never be wrong. For governments to move forward, you need to decide on certain things to do. For me, I have done my own findings and I, if I discover immediately the announcement was made, like me, I don't, I'm not speaking for the president, so I don't have an excuse for him why he speaks outside the country. That one is his own headache. My headache is that he's my president, and those of us that voted for him for second tenure knew that he was like that in the first four years. <laughs> so we can all, all the about 12 point something million that voted for him cannot just be stupid when they know that he was like that four years ago, and this time and they needed him and return him back. Yeah. So that is my point. Okay. And, that, okay. and now, I, my investigation tells me that visa on arrival is not when you land at the border. They just say, okay, come in. There are procedures, like he said, even when you apply, see the same procedure, when you apply, the only difference between this one and that one is you don't apply before you leave. When you have a South Africa passport, for example, it simply means that South Africa government owes you, and Nigeria is part of Africa. So Nigeria, first of all, respects you because you have a brother Africa, and when you come, you tell them why you are here. They look at the reasons, and if it's genuine, they say, okay, one week. After one week, you go back to the immigration, either to renew or to send you back. And where you are going to is noted. That is why everything is computerized. Okay. At, the, at the press of button in Benin, what you did in, in um, Seven Border is known. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, uh, Austin, final thoughts on, on this. I, I think the government needs to be more open. I think they need to communicate more. Because um, what we're discussing, if we know the models, we we'll, won't we'll be talking about it. Yeah. If we know the benefits in terms of putting it, because as a policy advocate, I mean, I read policy, my master's degree level, national policy, but I mean, you need to communicate policy in substantially that people understand the content of it. So it becomes a, become a debate so people can then fit into uh, to policy. The only way policy is strong is when people accept it. If, if we have divergent view on the policy of government, no matter how good it is, yeah. people are going to need to look at the loopholes. So I, I think government, the Federal Republic of Nigeria uh, executive, need to communicate more, need to let us know the advantage. Like they said now, Rwanda, even though it just came up from the genocide, the, the, the genocide it had yeah. in 1994, yeah. today, Rwanda, in my opinion, is the best country in Africa. Okay. And I can give you a lot of reasons. Yeah. We drop on the border, but it's also a police state. Okay. There's police every junction, every corner, every block you get to. There's a policeman with a rifle. You don't hear the word like Hutu or Tusi because of the crisis of, before. Of, of the past. So, they, they know to understand their people and they work along with it. We need that. Today, vehicles are made in, 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 in Rwanda. Phones that we now buy are made in Rwanda. People are coming in. Yeah. So we need to just put a border society. We need to police our border properly. Forget all the porous border. The U.S. has seen. Mm. No country in the world without porous border. Oh, we are always, always going to have those porous border, but we need to police our border. I said sometime, I told the immigration officer sometime, I said, we need to trump our borders. What is trumping the border? Face them. Yeah. Put cameras in strategic locations. Yeah. Yeah. Do not trump. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what it means to trump the border. That's what it does not come out. Trump the border. Put the wall there, put the cameras there, and then make sure they're properly policed. That way you don't get the bad guys. There's something you say, sir. That's the most time we have. Well, before you go, Sonny, do, please, please. Yes. There's something, a point he raised, that yeah. in Rwanda is police. You see police at every point yeah. holding up. God bless you. <laughs> they don't collect. Anyway, so our anyway, own. Anyway, so that's, 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 that's what we draw. That's what we draw the So this conversation, uh, federal government's new visa policy on arrival. Uh, reactions are bound to trill it, like we've seen. Uh, some are joining. Others are purely political. But I think just like uh, Igbe said a while ago, we need to be more robust in communication just to ensure that the Nigerians that this policy is going to affect can buy, it, can buy into it 100%. That way, all the conversations, all the altercations, all the reactions and counter-reactions 
will stop and it will just be a policy accepted by a reasonable proportion of the population and then the workability will now be something that is generally accepted. We know that the federal government is bent on implementing this, taking effect from the 1st of January. That's just uh, less than a week from today. How is it going to pan out? Only time will tell. Austin Agbe, many thanks for joining us. And uh, Comrade Christian, many thanks for joining us. Vice President Michael Zawagdi, many thanks for Okay, we'll take a short break. Some of our sponsors of our forthcoming event will be coming on set with me in a jiffy. Don't go away.